coming up on the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. This is the stuff that they don't really show you in porn, where you have to like take it easy or um, you can have the same enthusiasm, but you're almost given like maybe a quarter of dick. And it's like, yeah. Right. So you, I, my thing is always to try and like present it well, but at the same time, don't want to hurt my co-star. So it's always a case of, you know, easing in and like watching reading body language and just having that little mini communication between the two of you but there have been a few that have been like look okay my fans want this but i'm petrified and i'm like yeah okay. <laughs> then we can here's ways we can do it so you can still have the whole experience but without the <laughs> the, the pain in their eyes, that they are completely and utterly in awe of the person in front of you. And they, and when they do in a scene and you can see that they're holding on to every single word, that they're completely and utterly engrossed in each other, that kind of stuff, it's only a shame that in some of these situations, you can't bring a camera with you. Yeah. But I've seen so many times where I've seen things and go, that's bloody, bloody beautiful. You are now listening to the Venus Cuckoldress podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Go to venuscuckoldress.com. You'll find the new Queen's Quarters fan destination. Book a one-to-one -one chat with me, listen to the private podcast, and even get access to my secret Snapchat group, where I share some of my most intimate encounters. Now sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's dive right into this episode. Welcome, everyone, to the show. I'm your host, Venus. I'm so excited for this one today. Today, I have this super sexy guy named The Shadow Dimitri, who's going to be on the show and talking about all oh, what it's like to be an adult content creator in London. And big shout out to one of my helpful cucks, Oliver, who suggested uh, Dimitri as a guest for the show today. And I'm just so grateful for all of the help that I get from my group of helpful cucks. And if you're wondering what that is, it is a supporter tier on my website in the Queen's Quarters Supporter Club in the fan club, uh, where you get to help me out with all sorts of different things. So suggesting guests for the show is one of them. So if you want to sign up for that tier, there's tons of other benefits. And uh, you can go to venuscuckoldress.com to check it out. Okay, big announcements. <laughs> this is crazy. This is fucking crazy. Like I am just, I don't know. I'm still shocked about this because this is just, it boggles my mind. It's crazy. So holy fuck, this show, this little show about cuckolding, the Venus Cuckoldress podcast <laughs> It just bumped up to the ranking of the top 0.5% of all podcasts in the world. That's insane. <laughs> There's over 3 million podcasts. That just is like, holy shit. <laughs> That's amazing. This little show where I talk about cuckolding is that popular. It's, it's just like, wow. I just want to say a big, huge thank you to everybody, everybody who's been listening into the show. Like there's a lot of you <laughs> just want to say a big, huge thank you for believing in my message and supporting the show. So my message of cucks are loved and cherished and valued and women really can have it all if they just ask for it. So thank you to everyone for tuning in, for supporting the show and supporting my message. I'm hugely grateful. Can you believe it? Top 0.5%? Like what? <laughs> what? Oh 
holy fuck. <laughs> That's crazy. And okay, second announcement. <laughs> this is going to be really fun. So make sure you tune into this. Uh, Dimitri and I, my guest for the show today, are teaming up to do a live chat on the Moan app. And that is going to be Thursday, May 18th, coming up. Uh, on the Moan app, and that'll be noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern, and 8 p.m. UK time. So make sure you tune in for that. It is going to be live, a live event. for It's free. You can just download the app and tune in at that time, and you can ask questions. You can join in the chat. You can. It's just always a lot of fun. So make sure you check it out on the Moan app. That's May 18th. And then the very next day, get this. The very next day, May 19th on Friday, I am doing a special Pillow Talk event. <laughs> Just wait till I tell you who my guests are. Okay, this is going to be a free live Pillow Talk event that will feature my guests, Harmony California, the OG Queen of Spades herself, and the one and only... Doc Chocolate of the Bulls and Queens pod podcast, but also a prolific adult content creator, as you can tell by his Twitter and his OnlyFans. So I'm going to have the two of them on the show. It's going to be free. It'll be at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern on the 19th. If you want to register, you just go to venuscuckoldress.com, click on the events tab, and you'll be able to check that out. Okay. That's it for announcements, I think. <laughs> Pretty sure that's it. <laughs> now it is time to jump in to this little chat I had with the very, very sexy Dimitri. Here we go. Joining me on the show today, I have the shadow Dimitri. And he is a UK content creator, a sex positive nudist, a performer, and events host. Welcome to the show, Dimitri. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to have you here. It was one of my helpful cucks who is in one of the membership tiers to support the podcast. Mm -hmm. And he, I put it out to my helpful cucks, okay, who do you want to see on the show? And he recommended you. That's how I came across <laughs> you. So I'm super happy to have you on the show. And I must say, I did, I had to do a little homework to, you know, look you up and figure out what your content is all about. I did not mind that homework at all. You're hot as fuck and your videos are really good. So I am super happy to have you here. I'm a little squirming in my seat because, yeah, this is fun. But you're you're in London right now, right? Yes, I'm in London right now. Okay, and the accent is definitely doing it for me too. Okay, and um, so <laughs> I'm gonna compose myself here. <laughs> compose myself. It's good thing I'm not no, recording this in person because. If I was recording this in person, there's no fucking way I'd be able to keep myself composed. Like, <laughs> I'm lucky I'm doing this remotely. You did a great job at the moment, so. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So before we jump into things and, and talk about all the, you know, exciting stuff, I want to ask you, okay, how did you, you're this content creator online mm -hmm. and all of these other things, like how did you get to where you are doing that? Like, what was your journey like? Oh, it was, um, it was actually more of an accident, a happy accident. Um, I originally was into, I was a bit of a swinger, then a bit of a kinkster and someone just kind of asked me, would you consider going into the adult industry because you, and they pointed me in the right direction. They gave me some um, helpful tips as to what to do to get started. And yes, I was very nervous at the beginning and I was just lucky that the people that I met earlier on really, really set the tone and really helped me like really get into the industry very well. And I'm forever grateful to them. So I was I was lucky. I was in the right place at the right time with the right people. And how long ago was that? Uh, just under about two years, I guess. Okay. Oh, so you're pretty new at this. I would not yeah. have guessed your content is awesome. 
thank you. And there's a lot of it. So I'm like, you're busy as fuck. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I figured out by trying to book you for this. I was like, okay, this guy's got a lot going on. Um, so, so two years you've been doing it. You had some good people that introduced you to, to making content. Yes. Um, what else, what other kind of things have you been up to other than just creating adult content? Um, because at the same time, um, I was a trainee firefighter and I was also doing graphic design and handyman work. So I was freelancing for a lot of time, for a long time. I was doing a lot of odd jobs and stuff. And, uh, this just added to the already list of long list of things that I just do in my spare time. So, uh, okay. Yeah. And, and I know I was looking at some of your videos and you do do some cuckolding stuff and we'll get yes. into that. Yeah. But I, I was, I, I noticed that there's a lot of BDSM themed stuff as well. Is yeah. that something that you really enjoy as well? It, it's something I actually love with a passion. Um, I think BDSM and kink are ways of people just finding out about themselves. I love the psychology behind it. I love watching, like, giving pleasure to people in a way that is controlled and non-judgmental kind of way. So it's just nice. It's just liberating. So it's something that I genuinely, genuinely enjoy. Yeah, the kink community, I think, in my opinion, is made made up of just the most welcoming, non-judgmental people. Like you can just be you and people don't give a fuck. They're like, sure, was, <laughs> let's do it, yeah. which is awesome. You just don't come across that, I think, in a lot of places in society. So I yeah. totally understand the gravitational pull towards that for that reason. Yeah. I have come across uh, content producers who are also very into the kink aspect of it. So these two things seem to go pretty hand in hand. Are you, do you monetize your kink work or interests as well? Or is it just like the video production of like porn stuff? I try and hold back to, to, to an, a certain extent. I don't want to completely take the kink world into porn because there are some aspects of it that I still find very sacred and I still enjoy it. I don't want it to ever feel like work. Mm -hmm. And um, when you take things into like a work environment, the joy starts to come out of it and you literally start treating it as work. Whereas for me, it is something I genuinely enjoy. Um, right. I, I used to do a lot of pro dom work um, and I used to do a lot of uh, cuckold meets where people want me to um, uh, perform cuckold um situations set homework set challenges set punishments so um and i took pride making bespoke um, scenes for them so for me it's it's something that i find actually joyous rather than work so i don't really want to tarnish that okay so you're saying you do enjoy doing those scenarios for couples is that right yeah i do okay. um again if it's a genuine thing if it's a genuine kink and this genuine enjoyment behind it. I, I I enjoy doing it. Okay, let's just let's jump into this part because I just love this. So I was speaking to I think it was Doc Chocolate about this, and he's got the Bulls and Queens podcast. Such a great guy. And um I was telling him how within the cuckolding lifestyle for couples, the struggle is to find the right bull and to get the right scenario that they want. And, uh, you know, there, there's a, a need and a desire there that is unfulfilled generally and a real struggle for these couples. And I was like, why don't we have more of these gentlemen like yourself who are you know, who really love and enjoy giving these experiences. And I'm like, can we just like brand them as fantasy facilitators? Because, that's, right? That's actually what I used to do for my friends. Um, it used to be a, a private thing that I'd actually do for my friends. I find out what their kinks are and um, do my best to make facilitate it. So I've had friends that have certain fantasies that, 
they'd always want to do, but they don't know how to get it started. So yeah. I, I, using that information and with the right circle of people that I have at my disposal, I try and make these fantasies happen. I love that so much. And I think it would be so great, especially for the new couples who are nervous as fuck, who are, you know, and this is a very um, touchy kind of spot in the relationship where if it goes wrong on that first time, it's disastrous. So getting it right is really, really important. And I'm like, why don't we have these fantasy for? facilitators out there. I get it in the laws here in Canada and the US is probably not legal, but <laughs> I'm like, this needs to be a thing. It really does. So I, it warms my heart to know that you enjoy doing that, that you love doing that. That was going to be one of the questions I asked you. Do couples approach you? Do you do the, this kind of work with them? And so I'm just thrilled to hear that that's a yes. But again, it's also, um, it's not as much as I'd like to, because obviously now I'm in the um, adult industry. I'm very much limited to um, working with only with people that are also in the adult industry. So it kind of puts a barrier between me and the average person that wants to get to know these things, want to have the questions, want to have the fantasies. Yeah. So there's a lot to juggle with this, but yeah, it is something that well. I still do know. After this show, I'm sure your DMs are going <laughs> to be lit up. <laughs> no, I think that's that's wonderful. Okay, so did you, when you first started doing adult content, had you already been introduced to the cuckolding thing? Like, is this something that goes way back or is this something that's way new back. for you? It's a, Way back. Uh, oh. Because before I got into the adult world, I was a swinger. I, I came through the swinging background. Um, I met up with other couples. I met um, the whole couple swap, the whole, um, I've been a bull to a few couples that I'm still friends with to this very day. And it's just, yeah, I, I was really into it long before I got into kink, long before I got into porn. So I understand when people have these fantasies and they, they think I'm going to be, <gasps> it's taboo. And I'm like, no, you're not saying anything new. I completely understand. So... Again, so oh, long as it's a genuine enjoyment, then I'm happy to facilitate. Now, okay, and so, so you've this you were introduced to this a while back, mm. and there's definitely a wide spectrum when it comes to cuckolding. You've got like hot wifing on one end, you've got yeah. cuckolding on the next, and there's all sorts of different dynamics within yeah. that. One one's more tame, like cuckolding light, hot wifing, and then there's like cuckolding extreme. Yeah. <laughs> So where, what's your sweet spot? Where do you fall on that spectrum where you're like, this is where I'm comfortable? The only thing is, is because like you very well said, um, there's a massive spectrum of it. For me, my only, I'd say my only stumbling block or only like boundary is that I'm not bi. So there's a lot of the, um, the forced buy stuff that a lot, that some cockles want that I can't facilitate. So it's, you know, there's ways around it that you don't have to, it doesn't have to be sexual, but at the same time, it's something that I'm very hyper aware of and it's always changing with yeah. people's fantasies and wants. So. Yeah. I've heard that often where um, the bull is like, you know what? I just not good. I'm not going to go down that road because I just mm. don't. And, yeah. and, and that's tough because yeah, I've had, I've heard of way more couples looking for buy bulls than I've come across yeah. buy bulls. I mean, maybe there's, there is a lot of buy bulls, but they're just not advertising it. I don't know. There is, um, I actually know a few, but again, it's advertisement. How do you get out there? And Dare I say it, there is also massive, um, I hope this is okay to say, but there's almost like a, uh, like a fetish that's for some bulls to have certain aesthetics. And when they don't meet those aesthetics, they don't always get work. So there's always the challenge of that as well. Are you talking about like body type or dick size or is that what you mean? All of the above. And also, <laughs> you've also got this, um, you know, 
There's some that are specifically picked because of race. So there's a lot of things, a lot of factors that goes into picking the bull. So, yeah. you know, so it's not as oh, easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the very beginning, when I first started the show, I met, when I was, you know, talking about the basics of cuckolding, what it's all about, mm-hmm. I made a point of saying, look, bulls come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Like, they, yeah. you know, just like regular human beings. And so... <laughs> It's not that it's, you know, the default is one type of guy. Yeah. Certainly in real life cuckolding, you know, with regular couples, like it, that, it, that is true. It is basically like bulls or whoever they want them to be. But in, when it comes to like content and uh, videos and porn and stuff like that, and, and the porn caption memes thingies, Mm -hmm. like, it's one type of guy, usually. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. I just happen to love black guys. I think black guy, black men are just sexy as fuck. Like, I was looking at, yeah, chef's kiss. Absolutely. I was looking at one of your videos where you were fucking this chick from behind and you were doing the, like, circular motion thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, damn. That is a black guy thing. That is, like, that's how you guys <laughs> fuck different. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I've got rhythm in the hips. What can I say? That's it. Absolutely. And okay. And let's talk about your dick because it's glorious. It's beautiful, huge, my size. I'm a size queen. I love it. So, yeah, obviously, you've got that going for you. Blessed. Mm-hmm. Hashtag blessed. And, uh, and that works well for you in the content industry, I'm sure. Do you come yes. across any women, though, who are like, can't take it, though? They are, but then this is the this is the stuff that they don't really show you in porn, where you have to like take it easy, or um, you can have the same enthusiasm, but you're almost given like maybe a quarter of dick, and it's like, yeah. Right. So, you, I, my thing is always to try and like present it well, but at the same time, don't want to hurt my co-star. So it's always a case of you know easing in and like watch the reading body language and just having that little mini communication between the two of you. But there have been a few that have been like, look, okay, my fans want this, but I'm petrified. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> then we can, here's ways we can do it. So you can still have the whole experience, but without the, <laughs> the, the pain. So my yeah. friends, my friends, that reminds me of a story. My friend Scarlett, she she's on the uh, Flaming Yoni podcast. Mm. She's fucking hilarious. But we're both size queens and love black men. And she was like, "What did she say? She was fucking some guy, and she was almost gonna run from. She calls it running from the dick, <laughs> running from the dick. You know, the whole <laughs> pushing away, the like arching your back, the like, oh shit, mm. that's too much. And we, I tease, we tease each other about that now because I'm like, eh, there ain't oh, no running from the dick, honey. Body languages. <laughs> Yeah, body language. There's like in porn, I've seen it where the women kind of like yeah. reach back with their hand and put it on your thigh or something like that. That yeah. that's their sign of like it's hurting right now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I get it. All those poor women who have to get warmed up and stuff like that. It sucks yeah. to be them. I'm not one of those. I'm a big pussy girl, so I'm I'm like I like my my pussy because it's so great for big black guys because like it's so welcoming, you know. You don't have to knock. You just come right in. <laughs> it's great. I'm hashtag blessed. <laughs> and all these all these women who want this tight pussy, I'm like, but why? Obviously, you're fucking these little dick guys. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's the whole designer pussy thing that everyone's going for. But okay. Now I want to ask you a little bit more detailed stuff about these uh, scenes that you do in the okay. videos regarding hot wifing and cuckolding. Okay. Some of those women that you've made scenes with have been like, I looked at their accounts. I'm like, damn, they got stuff going on too. Like they're having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But I didn't actually watch like the videos, you know, from oh. start to fi- finish. Mm-hmm. Um, but what are some, like, I know, how scripted is it? That's what I want to ask you. Like, do you, the things that you you say and the things that she says, is that completely scripted or are you guys just kind of going with it? A lot of what we do is off the dome. It's, it's, that's not very rarely do we get scripted content. It's, um, 
what we may do is if there's a scenario that we want to paint, uh, we go into character and it becomes role play. But a lot of the things that comes out of our mouth and what is said is improv. Oh, like, okay. So, yeah. So I like that. Thing, yeah. So the things that comes out of my mouth, they're very, yeah, impromptu. <laughs> When you were saying earlier that you, you know, used to do like firefighter work and like handyman stuff, I immediately went to like, God, if you showed up at my door, <laughs> I'd be like, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but that's where my mind went. <laughs> but then I was looking at one of your videos. <laughs> I saw you show up at someone's door. I was like, fuck me. That's what I need right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, some of the scenes are hilarious. But um, like I said, I've literally been very lucky. I, I look back at all the people that I've worked with and I'm like, damn, I've been lucky. Like, And it's, you know, you always fear that when you meet your heroes or you meet people that you admire, that they're not going to be nice. And it's like, it's been a 100% record that everyone that I've actually had the privilege of working with have been just absolutely hilarious and just fun to be around. So, oh, that's so good. Yeah. What is your Okay, so when you go to shoot a video with somebody, yeah. what does that look like? Like what's your average day look like when you go to do that? Well, prepping, you know, obviously communicating with each other, trying to make sure you get the venue sorted. Um ask if there's like any um props or anything you need to bring with you. Um sorting out the paperwork in terms of things like a model release. Um also uh, checking each other's uh, certs, uh, the um, certs that you get from Dean Streets, just to just make sure everything's on the up and up. You also do that again on the actual day of the shoot and um, also finding out about levels, well, what kind of um, do's and don'ts, as it were, oh, yeah. for the shoot. So um, things that they're comfortable with, if they've got any preference on what kind of scene they want, and then you just negotiate. You can... And I've also been to some shoots where people don't want a scene. They don't want a, um, a storyline as to why it's happening. And it just happens off the dome. So a lot, which each performer you work with, there's always something new to be brought to the table. So, yeah. Okay. Is it the, I guess, the producer or the or her that decides what the scene is going to be? Well, again, if you're working for a studio, um, working doing porn for studio and doing porn with content creators are two completely different. different. Okay, that makes sense. Um, if you're doing it for a studio, you're at the mercy of the studio. You basically do the storyline that they have. You do the scenes and the shots that they want. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much structured. Uh, some studios let you have free reign, but a lot of them are structured. Um, but when you're working with con content creators and other um, performers and porn stars, um, you negotiate. You just talk with each other and say, yeah, I really want to do a scene like this. Or someone might say, oh, I've always wanted to do this. And, and Or I've got a custom order for this kind of a video. Or my fans really like this sort of uh, mm -hmm. things. And then you just negotiate with each other and produce content. So, yeah. So is this your like full-time job? It's not, but it's it's rapidly becoming that way. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, again, I'm humbled by the amount of love and support I've been getting. A lot of people are asking to do collaborations and projects. And it's, I just pinch myself because it's like my calendar is just constantly getting filled up with either working with projects or uh, helping out with other people's projects as well. So I, I really, we've had someone drop out. We really would love you to come into this shoot. And it's just been that. It's been that. <laughs> Success. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, well, I think, are you planning though, like to eventually make it your full-time job? Would that be ideal for you? The end goal would be to, because I enjoy being in, in front of the camera, but I've got so many ideas. The, the the one thing that I think I'm lucky with is I have so many ideas and concepts that I really want to shoot. And with the right budget, location and stuff, there is so many things I want to do. So I'm thinking it, I may migrate at some point to being behind the camera and actually like coming up with some very quite out there stories and 
you just try to like quite out there. What does that mean? Like I was like kinky <laughs> stuff or just like wild or like pushing boundaries or what? A little bit of everything. I, I guess I don't want it, I don't want it to just be boy girl in a room bang bang because a lot of times that's that's what you get. But I want to do the kind of stuff that yes, you can get that um, gratitude that gratification, but it's shot nicer. It looks nicer. There's there's a little bit of a skill, a story, a tease to what you're I'm doing. So, like I for one, I I see myself as a gentleman dom, and I'd love to try and change that whole doms have to be mean and angry and raise their voice to the girls kind of thing. And I'm trying to change that stereotype of you don't have to. You can get you can do just as much with just a soft whisper or just a, a well placed like word and stuff so yeah i just want to try and do more creative things i so, so understand and appreciate what you're saying with that because yeah. this has been I, I have i've done a few porn video review episodes mm -hmm. i was really convinced i don't really watch a lot of porn but mm -hmm. i i was really convinced that there was like a lot of really great cuck porn out there and then, so I, w I asked people, send me your favorites. Like, I want to know what, what are the good ones? And I would watch them. And I'd be like, oh, that didn't really do much for me. Like, it's okay, but like, I wouldn't go back to it. And I realized that this is all content made by men for men, cons male consumption. And no wonder it doesn't press the buttons in my brain. <laughs> I'm looking for, and as I'm looking for a different script, I think, rather than the stereotypical cuck, oh, pathetic, yeah. poor little thing, like, you know, on his hands and knees, like just begging for, you know, poor me, you know, like that kind of thing. I'm looking for something different. And I never really get anything other than that from the content. So I know exactly what you're saying. Like there's these little words and looks that you can give, but I, it takes creativity. It takes, or I guess a lot of skill to be able to figure that out in a way that like translates properly. Mm. And this is, this is the challenge and I enjoy the challenge. I want to create stuff like that. So. Oh. Well, if you do go into venture into the cuckolding stuff and you're thinking about producing that, I will definitely give you a few pointers and tips about what I think that women really want to see. <laughs> this has to happen. I, 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 I welcome this. I welcome all input. So, yeah, yes, let's make this happen. People so many people over the years have said to me, oh, you know, you should really make videos. You should make porn. Like, you should do this stuff. And I'm like, for fuck's sakes, I don't know how to do this shit. And I really don't know how to translate what's in my mind to, like, you know, a script or, like, yeah. a scene. You know, I just – I don't know how – I just know what it feels like when those buttons are pressed. You know that look. You know that look when a cuck – you say or do something mm -hmm. and a cuck reacts – in this very visceral, um, uncontrolled way where he just yeah. kind of like, is like, ugh, like that, like, uh, like he just melts, yeah. like he physically, emotionally melts in that second because of something she said That's or did. Or, and it's, it's, that it's, 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 moment yeah. is magical for me. That turns me on so much. And yet it's such a natural, um, what's the right word? Unplanned kind of yeah. thing that, yeah. And how would you put that into a scene without it seeming like it's like fake, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing is capturing that natural enjoyment, that natural euphor euphoria. It's, yeah. it's when you can catch that, that's like lightning in a bowl. And it's. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's what I need. That's what I need from cock porn in order to turn me on. And I, I just don't get that. I don't see it. And so I'm just like, well, I'm, I find myself like, I'll like, really like that video because he, his dick is glorious and I really yeah. fucking love looking at it. <laughs> yeah. You, you know? can do that. And the thing is you could be playful with it. It doesn't always <laughs> have to be like, I like to put elements of teasing into the video. It doesn't always yes. have to be like, everyone gets what they want straight away. It could be a little tease, a little play, having fun with it. And I think there's almost like a blueprint where everyone thinks this is what you need to do for this particular scene, or this is not a cock scene unless you've said or humiliated or done this or that. And I kind of think you can break away from that mold and come up with something else. But I think people are very scared to go outside of what sells. And yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I com- you're the first person I've talked to that actually is saying these things because mm-hmm. I've been thinking about this for years. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I there's something to with cuckolding, there's a lot of tease and there's a lot of denial as well as for some cuck- most cuckolding, I should say, yeah. where it is like a mental strip tease. Now, if we can get a mental strip tease in a porn video, mm-hmm. that would turn me on so much. And I know it would turn on a cuck so much too, yeah. because I know how their brains work. Yeah. And so I'm like, if you could put together this like mental strip tease, visual strip tease of a cuckolding situation where you have just it's almost like, you know, movie trailers where they just show you this little glimpse mm-hmm. and then you have some sound and then you're putting these scenes together in your mind. And and it's very like suspense and it's very mm-hmm. like anticipation and and very like uh, thrilling. Mm-hmm. Can we have that with it can porn? Happen. Like, it can. I want that. <laughs> That's the thing is, it can happen. There, there, there is... There, and I see, and the thing is, this is the thing. I, I see it in kink environments. Oh, when I yeah. see a natural, um, like a mistress and and a cock together, or a wife and or a hot wife and a husband, or a cock and a and a wife. When you see that natural, like almost like pure submission in their eyes, that they are completely and utterly in awe of the person in front of you and they and when they do in a scene and you can see that they're holding on to every single word that they're completely and utterly engrossed in each other that kind of stuff it's only a shame that in some of these situations you can't bring a camera with you yeah but i've seen so many times where i've seen things and go that's bloody bloody beautiful Yes. That's actually, and you just, and you just see that relationship. And you can just see the gratitude in the, in the cock's eyes when he's looking at everything that he's been asked to do. And it's like, how, how is that bad? Look at, look at the joy in their face. That is that. And if you can like make content like that. But that is very artistic. That's an art, yeah. right? To be able to it capture that and portray that. And that. That's difficult. And I totally get what you're saying about how like it was very scary for people to branch out into something like that because who yeah. knows if there's even a market for that, you know? But like I'm I'm sitting here going, please, <laughs> please. But that's I the think thing. it would be great. If you don't create it, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. So I really hope that that you do go down that road and that you do venture in that direction because I th- I would totally 100% support that. You seem to understand that there is this magical these magical moments that happen organically in these situations yeah. that we don't I don't think necessarily get from mainstream porn. So but that I, you know, feed off of I live for that shit. Like I you know, I would absolutely get off on that <laughs> way more than watching just regular piv that's fucking on the screen <laughs> and that's what porn was originally made for it's meant to be a little uh, a tool to for you to get off on if, if you if you're not getting off from that content then either find it or create it yourself you know yeah. make the kind of content that you'd enjoy watching which is kind of why this is going to be a little shameless plug oh my god <laughs> go for it um I was quite lucky that um, I've got a really good videographer that uh, like follows me and shoots a lot of my stuff and he just gets it. So when you've got a team behind you and you you throw an eye there and they just get it, it's great. So the kind of content that I've been shooting lately are the kind of stuff that I would enjoy watching. And luckily it's the kind of stuff other people enjoy too. So I've been lucky in that regards. And I think if you've got like a good team and they they also like what you like and you creating something together, yeah, it's nothing but positivity. Okay, that makes artistic sense. photos, by the way, people. Artistic, artistic. photos. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Agreed. Agreed. No, okay. That makes total sense. Cause your videos do look really good. Like they look really good. So, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, and yeah, you'd have to have a really good team for that. So, okay. And what else do I need to ask you? Is there anything else that you want to share with the, with the listeners for today's show? Um, 
Oh, I do want to actually get people's heads around the whole cuckold and hot wife. There's a massive difference between the two. Oh, please share. People don't seem to always get that. Like they, they, I've had situations where I've worked with some really amazing hot wives and people don't understand how that dynamic works. And it's like, yeah, like there's a difference between a cuckold who likes the, some that likes the humiliation, not all of them do. And that's another thing that needs to be said. But mm-hmm. with the hot wife situation, it's like majority of the time, the husband's in on it. The husband's happy. It's It's an inclusion thing. But you still have people that um, sometimes want to treat the hot wives' husbands as cocks. And it's like, you know, if that's not been bestowed upon it, you can't just tarnish that brush here left, right and centre. So sometimes I think, like, it's only because I've had close friends that are and the kind of comments that has been hitting them has made me laugh that people, there's so many people that have very little understanding about the two. Yeah, that, uh, probably a lot of that misunderstanding comes from your stereotypical cuck on screen mm-hmm. and um, and how to treat him based on what you see in porn, right? Yeah. Um, I get that. I hear it all the time. I do. And it, it sucks because it's, it's another instance of in this lifestyle painting somebody with one brush. That's it. And, and that... Like and assuming that everybody is all the same, where it is such a wide spectrum of 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 practices and dynamics, and I'm sure it's the same with bulls too. Mm-hmm. Where especially if you're, if you're a black bull, like uh, you'll get automatically treated in a certain way <laughs> when that might not be your thing. Like it yeah. might not be your thing. Yeah, um, do you ever get contacted by single cucks asking for, I don't know, questions <laughs> and advice and basically yes. just acting badly? I do. Um, I take it with a pinch, like a pinch of salt. I try not to take offense because for me, people can ask questions and all you can do is either say yes or no, it's not for me because I, you do have the people that will message you and some weird requests I'll get is, oh, do you allow cock cleanup duties and I'm like well if you're not a performer no I do not allow that and it's also a case of you know is this something that is also going to be agreed upon with the model that you can't just insert yourself and think it's that easy to just you know because you're a cop and I'm a bull that that relationship automatically happens it's like no and especially when um you have people that will message you with the odd oh would you bl- would you bang my wife? And I'm like, yeah, again, <laughs> randomly. Um, with all due respect, I don't know who you are. I don't know who your wife is. Uh, I wish you the best in your search, but it's just not going to be me. And it's just that kind of trying yeah. to find a diplomatic way of just saying sorry. Okay. You're busy doing all of this content and everything like that. You're enjoying this lifestyle I'm assuming that you're single. I didn't even ask you. Uh, I'm polyamorous. Um, I don't know how many people know what that is, but uh, I have multiple partners that I'm very close with. Um, They know about my lifestyle. They know what I do. uh, They know about each other. It's kind of like an open and honest kind of relationship kind of thing. Um, And uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm genuinely happy. So, um, Oh my God. That's perfect. Like that literally just makes it all work together when you yeah. have that kind. I, I've met several bulls who have the same kind of setup and it just works beautifully because you can still, you know, not you, you can still be who you are and do what you want and what you love and yeah. still have those amazing, loving, committed relationships in your life. Like yeah. it's just, that's beautiful. That's great. Well, I'm glad I asked you that. All right. So Before we go, I want to make sure that I give you the opportunity to let everybody know where they can learn more about you, where they can find all these juicy videos that I've been talking about and doing my homework with. (laughs) Okay. Um, My Twitter handle is at ShadowDimitri1. My uh, Instagram is TheShadowDimitri. So um, 
please feel free to. The other spicier links are in there somewhere sprinkled. So uh, <laughs> if you want to do a bit of searching, by all means, feel free. <laughs> Awesome. And I will include those links in today's show notes. Oh, before I go, almost forgot. Me and you are doing a Moan Chat, a live Moan Chat together Ooh. on the Moan app. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. what? I get to pop Dimitri's uh, Moan app at Cherry. So this is going to be good. <laughs> it won't be gentle. This is just going to be full on. Okay. <laughs> That is going to be uh, Thursday, May 18th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. That's, I believe, 8 p.m. UK time-ish. 8 p.m. UK time. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to check it out, uh, check out the link in the description notes for today's episode. It'll have the Moan app linked there. Just download it, create a free, free private account, and then drop in at that time on that day and hang out with us. You can actually ask questions. You can ask questions in the chat. You can pop up and say a few things if you want. It's so, so much fun. So don't miss out on that one. The Moan app, May 18th at 12 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. UK time. Okay, Dimitri, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a blast. Thanks for having me. That's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget, I am live on GTFO Radio. That is Tuesday, May 23rd at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. You can check it out at gtforadio.ca live on Tuesday the 23rd. And of course, if you want to support the podcast, subscribe to the show or ask a question for the show, you can visit venuscuckoldress.com. And if you want to learn about cuckold matchmaking or FLR matchmaking, check out venusconnections.com. And of course, as always, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Cuckoldress V. That's going to be it for today. We'll see you next time. 